Joining me in the kitchen today is Marine Vanderheiden, director of the Urban Art Space in Hopkins Hall Gallery. Marine, thanks for being here. Thanks so much, Kate. Thanks so much for, for inviting. Of course, we're glad to have you here. Tell us about the Urban Art Space. Urban Art Space is part of the Ohio State University. We actually got started in where we are currently in the old Lazarus Building on the corner of town and high streets downtown in 2008. OSU staked out a little corner in the former bargain basement, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so we've been doing exhibitions and programs and projects there since 2008. Wonderful, I'm so excited to learn more, but I also wanna figure out what we're making today. Why don't you tell me about the recipe? You bet. Uh, I brought for us uh, vegan chocolate chip cookies. I'm Ooh, excited. Yes. <laughs> And in part, you know, I wanted to try this recipe together. Um, one of our staff members is vegan and, uh, you know, I wanted to be inclusive like we try to be at our space. So Absolutely. think about a number of different tastes and needs. I think that's really valuable in the art world and in the cookie world. I'm so excited to, to get started on this recipe. Tell us what we need. Two cups of all-purpose flour, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, a half teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of kosher salt, half a cup of virgin coconut oil, one third of a cup of tahini, six tablespoons of water, two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract, one and a quarter of a cup of organic brown sugar, and 10 ounces of vegan dark chocolate. Uh, I'd like to use the kind that is at least 70% uh, cocoa. Well, before we get started on our cookies, I understand you have an incredible internship program, especially with your connection to Ohio State. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, thanks for asking. The internship is really at the heart of you know everything we do. Give or take, we work with about 15 to 20 interns every semester. It's kind of like a practicum opportunity for them. So a laboratory space, urban art space serves as a laboratory space where they can gain hands-on experience in of course, arts administration, but also all of the other roles that come with, you know, operating an art gallery and working with artists in general. So it's been a really phenomenal opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that sounds a great deal for the students and for you, and they get to learn and you get the resources. That's wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and many have gone on to, um, you know, to jobs very related to the field, and so they're working and active in all kinds of sectors in the city, but especially in the arts mm -hmm. as well. That's so good to hear, to know that, that students have that option to kind of explore more of, of what their job opportunities can be in the art world. That's wonderful. Well, I think it's about time we make some cookies. Why don't you tell us what our first step is? Sure. We are going to actually heat up our coconut oil. So when you buy it from the store, it'll come in a jar and it's uh, probably not liquid. So mm -hmm. you want to warm it up a little bit so it becomes liquidy. Um, so we can easily work it into the rest oh, of our ingredients. Good. All right, well, our coconut oil cools down a little bit. Why don't you tell me about one of the programs you have at the Urban Art Space? Yeah, so this past year, we launched a brand new series called The Artist Commune. It's a monthly program that we do. We started it about a year ago. Um, and it really was designed for artists and supporters and, you know, lovers, uh, art lovers, that is. Um, to come together and, you know, commune around art making. So every month has a slightly different focus, you know, depending on um, either an exhibition that we're working on at that time that we have on display or uh, a program that we might be doing that month. Uh, giving us some inspiration for the monthly artist community. That's wonderful. So do people sign up? Do they have to register for this? Can anyone just come? Anyone can come. So oh, it's open, free and open to the public, like everything that we do is. And so, yes, that's really important to us as part of these offerings. That's wonderful. What a great way to kind of get new faces and get people involved in the arts. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's, let's get this going. Right. So we've got our cooled down coconut oil. And uh, what, what's next? All right, so yeah, this is ready to go right now. So Kate, I'm gonna have you mix the dry ingredients. Okay. And I'm gonna mix the wet ingredients. I'm gonna do the coconut oil, the water, the tahini, and the vanilla, and then the sugar will come last. Okay, great, so we'll get started. And I'll right. just work on getting our dry ingredients mixed together. Do you like to bake? Is this something you 
enjoy to do? Um, I like some baking. You know, I full disclaimer, I, I don't have the biggest sweet tooth, ah. so, um, but I love to cook in general, mm -hmm. so that's something that I appreciate doing. Yeah. Need to use the spatula here. Get all that tahini in. I love the flavor that that's going to add, too, to the cookies. It's it adds nutty. absolutely a bit of nuttiness, a bit of moisture. Um, it's really an incredible recipe. And, you know, it's hard to know the difference from the non-vegan chocolate chip cookies. Oh, yeah, we should do a side-by-side -side comparison. I'm excited. All right, this is pretty well mixed. And so the next step would be to combine these two ingredients. Is the sugar going yeah, yeah. There we go. Thank I was like, you. there's a sweet sure, part sugar. missing. <laughs> Key ingredients yeah. in all baking. Absolutely. Yes. You can see how that's already reminiscent of like creaming butter and sugar when you would make non-vegan cookies. I can kind of see how it's, it's a similar congealing. process. It's congealing, yes, beautifully. Yeah. All right, okay. I'd say we are ready. Now, I think the recipe calls for the um, dry ingredients to get mixed into the wet mm -hmm. ingredients, but since you have the bigger uh, bowl, yeah, we'll let's just, turn yeah, it around, that seems right? Fair. All right. There we go. Get all that in. Okay. We might want. Should we mix with this? Keep yeah, mixing. Let's go okay. For it. Yep. I'll just let's do that. Mix this all together. See how it starts to turn into a cookie dough. What do you think? Before it gets too mixed in, should we add the uh, chocolate chips? I think we're there. Yep. I'm toss them so in. let's do the chocolate okay. chips. Okay. Mix them up. Yeah. Don't forget any. No chocolate oh, left this behind. Oh, looks so good already. Yeah, and I don't even think we need to mix it too, Not too much? much. Okay, you think we're good? I think we're good. Okay. I think it can go to the fridge. All right, so we'll pop this into the fridge and we'll uh, get the oven preheated. Sounds great, Kate. Okay, so our cookie dough has been chilled. Looks like it came together nicely. Yes. Um, what are we going to do next? All right, so we're going to scoop the dough into balls. Great. Um, I think we were going to use this, but mm -hmm. I think, you know, we're going to go old fashioned oh, cool. today, right? Like two spoons. This um, is a good reference of the scoop size. Scoop size, okay. that's right. Um, at home, I might use an ice cream scoop, oh, for example, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So, and we want to place the dough roughly three inches apart. Okay, great. Now, we can't exactly measure that, but I think we could probably <laughs> fit like five right, on each sheet. All right, here we go. Let's all get right. started. Got to get all those chocolate chips in. I know. Okay. Do you think we need to roll it with our hands, or should we just scoop? I'm not opposed to we'll roll. rolling. I might, I might you, give it a try. If you're okay you with that. Just because it's a little crumbly. It shouldn't be too sticky yeah. because of the coconut yeah, oil. That is so nice. it has a super nice consistency. Mm -hmm. Very chocolatey. Love. Yeah. Okay, there we go. And we then new any method. miscellaneous um, chocolate chips, you can just kind Pack of push them in. Them in. Yeah. Okay. I'm making them maybe a little Ooh. bit too big. That's all right. Big cookies are good. Right? I'm very chocolatey. Looks like mine are going to be a little bigger mine than yours. You're super you're, chocolatey. Should you're, I make them no, bigger? No, no, you're more like ice cream scoop <laughs> size. Push a few more into. <laughs> kind of fun to get your hands in there. Roll it's them like art making. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So. Okay. We'll see how big these get. So we've got, I preheated the oven to 350 degrees, which is a great thing to do while your dough is chilling. Perfect. Uh, and then how long do they bake for? About 12 minutes. Okay. So they should be gooey in the center and a little bit crisp on the edges. Okay, great. All right, well, I'll get them in the oven. Let's see. I think if I both go side by side. Okay, our chocolate chip cookies are in the oven while those are baking. So the Broad and High team recently met your inaugural community artist in residence. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that program? Uh, thanks for asking, Kate. Uh, we just, you know, inaugural, we'll say it, we just mm -hmm. launched that program this summer. Um, it was actually born um, maybe about a year ago when we did a big community project um, on the Near East Side in a Bronzeville community as part of the Juneteenth celebration there. And um, we realized how exciting it might be if we worked on a regular basis with an artist from the Columbus community and worked on programming and projects together um, so that we can, both through the resources that OSU might have to offer, um, you know, bring 
community projects into the community, but also learn a little bit more from the community what, you know, what they might need and what they might be looking for. And then fast forward, I'll say um, this past summer, we, we participated in the Juneteenth um, celebration second time. Again, this was on Mount Vernon Avenue, um, co-sponsored by the Maroon Arts Group. Um, and, and some others in that area. And in addition to that, at the same time, we were hosting our very first huge intern-led project um, at Urban Art Space called Irrepressible Soul. And this project was quite incredible. It, it, it encompassed an exhibition, but also community-based events throughout its month-long uh, duration. So this was all in June. And then, of course, the Juneteenth celebration was part of that as well. Um, so we chose um, Eris to join us, Eris Cohen, to join us as part of that project because he was so closely involved with us as part of that Irrepressible Soul project and, uh, and as part of the Juneteenth celebrations as well. Wonderful. So, but the program will continue on. How often will you have a new artist in residence? So we host um, open calls for um, our community artist in residence program twice a year. So everyone, anyone who's interested in that, um, please, you know, apply. And same goes for a community, folks in the community who may be interested in working on projects with us. Um, we'd love to hear from you and engage with you. That's wonderful. What a, what a great two-way street to kind of let the community know that, that they can be involved. That's really great. Thanks, Kate. Well, our cookies are out of the oven. They look beautiful. They smell amazing. Thank you so much for coming here, Marijn, and, and teaching me these cookies and telling me about the urban art space. Thank you so much, Kate, for having me. I think we should end on a sweet note and try a cookie. All right, let's. They're so melty. Here we go. Oh. Mm -hmm. Everybody look away. They're delicious. That's it. That's all we can say. Just really good, huh? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Kate. Thank you.